There are many reasons to raise a character in Fire Emblem. Some are so good out of the box that you'd be making the game harder for yourself by not using them. Some grow into incredible powerhouses once you put enough time into them. And some provide unmatched utility just by existing on the field. None of these are true for Setsuna. She's the only unit in the game the developers clearly set out to make almost completely useless. And she even makes the game harder for you if she's left alive, because in the mess hall, she cooks stat-reducing meals. It's really hard to argue that she's any better than bottom three in the game. Even if you look at Tatuna, tell yourself, I can fix her, and give her all the resources in the game, she probably won't even be one of your five best units, even when compared to other units that have no investment put into them. But that won't stop her from being able to solo the entire game. Joining me today to talk about her in-game performance is someone who has done just that with her, Bloog. The Setsuna solo is linked in the description. Still, even though she's one of the most irredeemably bad units in modern Fire Emblem, there's still a very good reason to keep her around in every playthrough. It's definitely not because of her gameplay. It's because she has some of the most entertaining support conversations in the entire series. So be sure to max out her support ranks with everyone so you can see them all. Today, we'll be going over everything you need to know about how to race Setsuna. At least after you hit subscribe and notice that I have a new channel membership option, of course. Let's get started. So Setsuna joins as a level 3 archer in chapter 8. Oh boy. Yeah, right off the bat, People that are bow locked in Birthright already naturally struggle because of Reyna, mostly. Because Reyna just kind of steals the show with bow usage. And then by the time that Reyna's done being Reyna, you have a bunch of mechanists that can also use bows. Let's see. Does Setsuna's average stats at level 10 promoted, does her speed even match Reyna's? I... Uh, as a 10-1 Kenshi, she has 18 speed. Reyna at base has 20 speed, so she does not. And Reyna will be leveling up at the same rate as a 10-1 Setsuna, while also just having way better base stats than a 10-1 Setsuna. It's really sad. Yeah, and the other notable bow user in this game being Takami also kind of just beats Setsuna in almost every way. <laughs> yeah. Um, the availability difference is only two chapters, so Setsuna's only opportunity to catch up is really chapter 8, chapter 9, and if you saved them, Paralogue 1 and Invasion 1. And she is going to struggle to catch up with those eight levels in that time. Yeah, especially considering the fact that her join chapter is a desert map. And in that desert map, there are a lot of enemies with very high bulk and very high damage output. So she kind of struggles. The Oni Savages, she probably isn't going to be making very much of a dent in. There are like Diviners, which she can kill, but she faces Replin Triangle disadvantage and they are kind of fast, so they have actual avoid rates. It's not a great luck for her. There are Archers, but they are just kind of stronger than her, so... Even against the Archers, she needs... Like, like speed is her kind of her thing. You, you look at these growths, her speed growth is phenomenal. And even then, her base speed isn't enough to double the uh, snipers in that map without a speed tonic and a Kenshi Knight pair up, or and a Sky Knight pair up, rather. Yeah. And being an archer, she at least has a way of getting a bit more damage when her strength stat is as low as it is, because once she gets to level 10, she will eventually get Quick Draw. Quick Draw being plus four damage on every player face hit. But it's going to take her quite a while to get there, even after like feeding most of the reinforcements to Setsuna in Chapter 9 and feeding a lot of the stationary enemies to her. She'll just barely reach level 10 by the time you finish Chapter 9. It's not great. Yeah, it, it is nice that she does get quick draw, honestly. In that front, being stuck in Archer kind of does her a solid because not really many other classes would help her get that damage that extra damage output even if it's only on player phase yeah the problem still lies in the fact that she can't really enemy phase at all she's locked to two range she doesn't have any bulk really and in chapter nine chapter chapter eight like we've already discussed she still even needs speed support to like even double things if you're training her in Chapter 8, you're probably not having her double things. You're probably just leaving enemies at 3 HP and having her finish them off. Which yeah. 
isn't the most efficient use of your resources, but if you want to train Satsuni, you don't really have much of a choice. In Chapter 8, a lot of the enemies, like, rush you first, and kind of a problem with that is that Hinoka, Setsuna, and Azama all start as green units, and their movement is not very consistent. So oftentimes, Setsuna and Azama will go off and, like, do whatever they want while Hinoka tries to go talk to Korin, and that can cause pretty annoying <laughs> unit formations Yeah. by the time it, you can actually recruit her. It is possible to recruit Hiroko's group on turn one if you have Korin pair up with Tsubaki and have a zero pair up with, I think, any unit that can move freely on deserts, but you're kind of going out of your way to do that. Mm -hmm. It's probably still the thing you want to be doing, but... Yeah, even if you recruit Satsuna on turn one, getting her kills is still going to take a bit of extra work on your part. Yeah, you need to like intentionally stall the enemies because like your other units are pretty strong and while they probably won't reach like super one round thresholds, most of your weapons are probably going to be like crit weapons. Like you're, you're going to have like iron katanas and the guard naginata that Hinoka has that can just land a crit randomly, which does run a real risk of denying Setsuna even more kills than she'd already be trying to get. And like, we're already talking about Setsuna in the sad way that she needs to be improved. It's not like the other early game archers that you get in a lot of Fire Emblem games that are good for ship damage to help set up a kill for other units. No, that's not even what Setsuna's job is going to be. It's your other unit's job to feed her so that she can make a non-zero contribution to any given map. And um, another unfortunate part is being stuck in Archer in Birthright is that she has to use Yumi's exclusively. Yeah. And uh, Yumi's are not very accurate. In Chapter 8 alone, she rarely sees perfect hit rates unless she's like getting a lot of adjacency bonuses and <laughs> just it, it, it's not an amazing look especially against the diviners and dark mages in the first few chapters that you have her because those have weapon triangle advantage over setsuna though if you're planning on playing a more player phase game being an archer isn't the worst thing you can do archer has the benefit of being able to give decent dual strikes from positions that other one range locked units wouldn't be able to. So being able to set up for an aggressive push through chapter 9 or chapter 10 or chapter 12 is something that Setsuna is perfectly capable of doing even if her damage output is going to need a bit of support if you want her to accomplish some tasks. Being an archer isn't the worst thing in those maps particularly, but she does have some fierce competition in the form of Takumi and Reina in chapters 10 and 12 respectively. Yeah, the nice thing about her being stuck in archer as well is that in chapter 11, every single enemy there is a flyer. Yeah. Zero exceptions. So she's going to have effective damage on every enemy there. So she will actually do a pretty decent amount of damage even with her pretty poor strength, even if you haven't really been keeping up with her levels. She can still probably contribute to do something like provide strong dual strikes or even like that have be the chapter um, where she gets her levels. And the nice thing about Tatsuna is that you really don't want to be spending an extra unit action being paired up for an archer to support their speeds to get them to double. And Tatsuna's speed stats, if she is heavily invested in, will allow her to double enemy units without needing to have any pair of bonus, which is nice. Takumi definitely suffers from that problem, but he is able to one-shot if you stack his attack. Setsuna can't really do that. She needs to be doubling, and even when she's doubling, she kind of needs the benefit of quick draw in order to start one rounding things on player phase, assuming that you've also supported her attack. Yeah, it's nice that she gets support with Hinoka because it's really easy to build that up. So C support with a Sky Knight pair up is nice to fix her speed up a little bit without any like tonics or anything before she gets that like up to speed. Uh, no pun intended. <laughs> and at least she's not the unit in the biggest experience hole. Mozu and Hayato start at level 1, and Setsuna starts at a slightly higher level, although she's still going to end up taking you a lot longer to train just because those two units have an enemy phase, while Setsuna definitely does not. 
Yeah, comparing her to Mozu, Mozu does start at level 1, and while she does get like a full training map to herself, you're probably going to want to reclass Mozu into Archer to have an easier time training her, and by that point, you're doing the exact same thing that Setsuna can be doing. <laughs> I actually think Mozu is much easier to train if she's in Villager, just because you can just raise her to weapon rank D and then send her into the swarm of cavaliers in chapter 14 with the sword catcher and have her get easy kills there. I think it depends on when you want to recruit her or like what maps you want to bring her in, but yeah, I, I can see that. If you want to like not spend your entire life babying Mozu through every single map in the game just being able to do 20 combats put her on the bench and then put her in a map where she's actually going to be doing a thing i think that's the way to raise mozu i guess that's fair while satsuna doesn't really have that option she has archer which is good for chapter 11 and can help as a supplementary support unit in like chapters 9 10 and 12 but She's really not going to be getting to a very high level off of those maps. Maybe like, if you're lucky, level 13. And yeah, the rest of the game is just not very friendly to archers. Once you get past chapter 12, chapter 13, I guess you can kind of use archers because there are choke points in the form of the buildings, but beyond that, the utility of just having an archer is going to go just off a cliff. Yeah, I, I would say that the last possible map where archers are like super good is probably chapter 16 because that map does have a lot of walls that you can like kind of get away with being too range locked and everything. Yeah. And then after that, it's a little annoying to use a sniper. Even with like Reyna, you probably want to be reclassing her after chapter 16 if you want to be using her long term and units like Takumi and Setsuna are not too different from that where they don't love being Yumi locked. But if you do for some reason want to continue raising Setsuna in the Archer class line, she will eventually get access to skills that are alright. She gets access to Certain Blow, which does help offset the low hit of Yumi's. She'll probably be able to get to 100% hit rates on the vast majority of enemies with Certain Blow, just because that's a plus 40 hit bonus on player phase, though it doesn't work on enemy phase, so if you plan on using her on enemy phase, that won't really be helping her very much. Yeah, and then the nice thing about Certain Blow on Setsuna specifically is that this will allow her to more comfortably use things like the Steel Yumi. Units like Takumi and in some cases probably even Reyna, they don't totally love using like steel weapons, at least in the late game, because the steel weapons have a speed penalty to them and they have pretty poor hit. And Setsuna, when trained, doesn't really care about that speed penalty. She'll probably always double anyways. And the extra damage is probably the most valuable to her. Setsuna is the fastest unit in Birthrights. She is even faster than Kaze. And Kaze already usually has overkill speed, so Setsuna just takes it to another level in dumping every other stat that she has and putting it all in speed, which she doesn't need because speed is a threshold stat. If you're way faster than your opponent, all you're really gaining is extra avoid once you get past the doubling threshold which this is fates, so avoid stacking is usually not going to be the play. There are some tools that she does get to kind of increase her avoid if you want to go this route, <laughs> yeah. being um, notably air superiority. And I think that air superiority is just okay on her. <laughs> yeah. The, the thing with Birthright is there's a lot of Malignites, and they have a lot of tomes, usually. 
and some of them in the late game are even tome locked. So getting air superiority will actually help her with not getting completely bodied. If you're using Setsuna, you probably don't want to use her with a pair-up partner, which means she doesn't get the benefits of getting guard gauge, and that means if you send Setsuna into a group of even three malignites, she's probably just dead, unless she avoids with air superiority. Her resistance growth is one of her not as terrible ones, but it's still honestly not really enough to save her unless she starts like really avoiding things. And you're probably not going to get to soon into level 15 promoted, but if you do, if you're in Sniper, you will get Bow Fair, which is an extra plus 5 damage if you're using bows, on top of the plus 4 quick draw. On player phase so she will be able to contribute a bit it'll help her like reach one round thresholds or keep her reaching one round thresholds on the wyvern lords i guess yeah she's she's probably the unit that does benefit from bofer having bofer like the most out of any sniper in the game really i think bofer is just such an underwhelming skill because if you're using bows for their effective damage you can get more of a benefit from just forging your bow to an iron yumi plus one which will give you an extra six mites from effective damage when bowfare just gives you five of course it does help a lot more against units that you're not hitting effectively but setsuna probably isn't going to be making too much of a dent against great knights and generals anyways yeah the the most that she'll probably be useful for against non-flyers is probably adventures or just like any any other like bow locked unit because otherwise she she does still run into the problem of not really doing too much damage to the enemies and then it, it probably isn't enough to still kill so you'll either need to bring a second unit in to help her or i guess she'll just die yeah setsuna is generally never going to be doing anything close to being a carry in any normal playthrough of Birthright. She is going to be more of a support unit, and for a support unit, the skill Amaterasu isn't the worst thing to have. It is a 20% healing aura to all allies within two spaces. You could definitely do worse when it comes to support skills on a support unit, but getting her to level 15 promoted is a very big ask. Yeah, the most likely scenario of where you're using this on Setsuna is if you're immediately promoting her at level 10, and that doesn't really sound ideal for like continuing to train her, because having a 10-1 Kinchi Knight with already pretty terrible stats is... Uh, I don't love the sound of it. Especially when there's a 10-1 Kinchi Knight right there with very good stats at base. Yeah, exactly. It's It's... It's like, why why do this way harder thing when you could do the easy thing for yeah. the same benefit? Raina is, in fact, pretty good in this game. Archer is just not a class you want to be in in Birthright. There are contributions she can make, but to make a lot of them, she'll need to be leveling up and keeping up with the curve, and that's not something archers are very good at. However, one thing that I don't believe we've talked about yet is that I do think her personal skill does help her out kind of a bit if you do want to try and have her as one of your like main combat units because her personal skill helps her heal more HP when getting healed up by a staff. And that doesn't sound like anything too special at a first glance, but like when you really think about it, Setsuna is taking a lot of damage from one yeah. hit that's yeah. probably going to like send her to almost dead range and then once she gets healed back up she can instantly go back to full hp and then she'll be able to take another one hit on enemy phase and you can yeah. continue to do that which isn't the worst use for her but it does still require quite a bit of enemy control it does come with the notable benefits of making Setsuna not the worst beneficiary of the Wayne Festal. The Wayne Festal is a notoriously horrible staff that is effectively Birthright's version of the Physics Staff. It heals 
two base healing plus magic over three. So you probably are not going to get more than 10 healing on most units, even with staff users that have monstrous magic stats like Elise. It's very sad, but at least Setsuna can bump that healing up to like 15 maybe and chug a vulnerary to support herself. Yeah, and uh, I believe that this skill, this is a really cool use for this skill. I believe it works with Lib to serve. Oh. So if you have Jacob or Felicia heal Setsuna and they're also damaged, they can heal themselves back up to even more than the, what they would normally, um, which is pretty cool. It isn't always a good thing though, because in early game, you do want to raise Sakura's staff rank from E rank hell, and Optimistic can make it a bit harder to do that, because if you are healing Setsuna up to full, you don't have an opportunity to use a second Bloom Festal and get that extra staff experience. But in general, it's not a bad skill. So Setsuna is the most useful when she's used as a utility unit, and the thing that really sets her apart in doing that is her para bonuses. Now, Archer gives pretty good para bonuses, notably giving two strength and two speed. Starting in Archer is really good as a para bot, and her reclass is Ninja, which is also a, an insane para bot class. Yeah. So it doesn't really like matter what class she's in in her natural class set. She will usually be a pretty solid parabot for really any of your like main early game units. A notable one is probably Takami. You know, if if you're gonna want to use one of the non Reina archers, Takami is definitely the easier one of the two to use, and you can have Setsuna just help him out with that. And also, if you want to use Saizo as one of your main carries, a good way to do that is by giving him a Setsuda backpack and giving him tonics and getting him to the point where he can one around the Dark Mages and Cavaliers in Chapter 9 at base. Setsuna notably gives strength and speed, which lets him meet those speed and attack benchmarks. And I think with a rigged meal, you might be able to get him to one round the Armor Knights in that chapter too. So Setsuna support really does help you in the early game. And um, one thing that I do think is important to note is that at B support, she gives one point of speed from C and then one point of speed from B. The only other unit that does that in the entirety of Fates is Niles. Yeah. She gives another point of speed at S support, so that's three points of speed from her personal pair up bonuses. I believe the only unit that also does that is Ryoma. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and Ryoma's probably not being a pair up bot, so yeah. she's pretty damn good at it. Though, this probably isn't enough to justify bringing her in a deployment slot until the end of the game, just because you would much rather have a unit that is capable of accomplishing tasks in your backpack than just an archer that can tank an armor knight for one damage. I do think that early on there may be some like merit to bringing her, like in chapter 8, Chapter 9, there's still not a whole lot of deployment slots, so like you don't have all the characters yet, so there's definitely like some like leeway for her to actually like be deployed. But once you start getting to maps like chapter 15, chapter 18, chapter 19, there is pretty heavy contention for who you may want to be bringing. And Setsuna being as a strict parrot bot is definitely on the lower end of the priority list. Yeah. I mean, she does eventually get flight if you get her to level 10 and go to Kinshi, but flight usually isn't the most beneficial thing in Birthright. There are a few maps, especially Paralogs, where it's useful, and like the Fire Falls map. And if you are crazy and train her to level 10 before the Ninja map, she can be very useful there. But generally, flight isn't something that you need very often. And even if you want flight, there are much easier ways to get flight, like Reina, and Scarlet, and Tsubaki, and Hinoga. You probably don't need an extra flyer in the form of Setsuna. So, out of her friendship classes, 
really the only one that is any beneficial to her is probably Hana's friendship because Sky Knight from Hinoka is pretty redundant for her. She doesn't care about darting blow. She already has the speed. Camaraderie is nice, but it's not really going to heal her enough to like save her life uh, in most cases. Yeah. And really the only the only thing that would like benefit her from ever going to this uh, class would be like rally speed as a more utility based unit. But if you go into Falcon Knight, then you get stuck with E rank lances on top of her already terrible strength stat and growth. It's a really sad place to be in, and it'll be a while until you can actually get Rally Speed, unless you are really good at feeding kills with like Steel Defense Obero. Yeah, with a lot of these like speed based classes mainly, she really runs into the zero times two problem. Yeah, uh, way way more than than most other characters will. And that problem is especially true with the Ninja class line, which. A lot of units would kill to have as their Heartseal class, but Setsuna really doesn't benefit from it because shurikens have such low mites. I think the Brass Shuriken that she's going to have to start with, since she will have E-Rank Shurikens, has two mites. Uh, her strength stat at base is 8, so taking the reduction from Archer to Ninja and being stuck with a 2 might weapon will really make it difficult for her to do any sort of damage. You definitely want to, at the very least, level her up enough to get quick draw before you even think about reclassing into ninja. Yeah. Because she just won't have the damage. And while, while there are nice things that ninja has, like lock touch is, it's never a bad skill. Poison strike will help her deal a bit more damage than she otherwise would. If, if you reclass her while she's still unpromoted, especially, she's going to have an even worse time than she would an archer. And you may think, we've talked about this in I believe our Subaki discussion, that lethality could be nice to help out with the low damage output and actually score a few kills, but in Setsuna's case, I feel like that is far more detrimental for her. Because unlike Subaki, she does not have defense and HP. So if she's expecting to fight one enemy on enemy phase, but not kill, she's probably going to take a lot of damage from that first hit, and then she won't kill back, and then there will be no room for other enemies to target her. Unless she procs lethality, and then opens up more spaces and opportunities for her to accidentally get herself killed. And then even on player phase, it's not going to be good for her because she really wants guard gauge. And if she has a skill that denies her that, it's just not going to be a great look for her. And notably, lethality can only proc if you deal a non-zero amount of damage to an enemy. And that is not a given when you have a strength stat like Setsuna's and are using shurikens. Yeah, she kind of runs into this, this massive issue where in order for her to really contribute to anything meaningful in really any like a given class until I like the super late game I guess she's going to want the stat boosters yeah that's pretty much almost the only way to really fix her which is pretty rough in ninja though she does get shuriken fair if you manage to stick it out to level 15 <laughs> which is I mean it's nice the same deal as Bowfair, like she will benefit from the skill a lot. It will help her do non-zero to most enemies. Yeah. In Master Ninja, she does get access to effective weaponry against armored units, so she doesn't even really have to worry about that. And then she also gets dual shuriken, which is a nice weapon if uh, you get her uh, shuriken rank up there. The dual shuriken is actually very useful on Tatuta because it allows her to effectively, or, well, maybe not effectively, but it gives her a better chance of dodge tanking the Berserkers thanks to her high speed stats. Speed does yeah. contribute to avoid, so 
having the dual shuriken, doubling the weapon triangle disadvantage of Esrak Berserkers, and giving her the ability to stack a void with her ice speed is nice, although I wouldn't rely on it too much because if Setsuna gets hit by a Berserker, she's probably just dying. Yeah, especially in Master Ninja, where th like the defense of that class is already pretty low itself, yeah. and units like Kagero and Kaze already struggle with survivability in this class, and she has very similar defense, if not actually worse, because Kaze and Kagero at least have better HP than her. Though the main draw for Setsuna in the ninja class line is actually Mechanist. Mechanist does help a bit with her strength and defense while still allowing her to be in a shuriken using class, and it still gives her access to the bow rank that she's been training up, so she will be able to make contributions against flyers, especially the wyvern lords in the late game. Yeah, Mechanist is never a bad class, especially for Setsuna, where it gives her bulk, it gives her strength, and these are things that she's kind of dying for. Yeah. And um, especially, it's pretty cool with her, because if you want to go this route, you can eventually go back into Sniper, grab Bowfair, go into Master Ninja for a little bit, grab Shuriken Fair, and then you have a constant plus 5 damage no matter what weapon you're using. And Setsuna definitely needs the extra plus 5 damage. <laughs> yeah. The, the skills itself from Mechanist don't really benefit her at all, except for the the replica stays in the back to get healed strategy. That's true. But for the most part, like, Mechanist is probably one of her better classes, definitely, for a main combat role. Sending Setsuna out doing main combat probably isn't going to be something that you want to do, but if you're set on doing it, then yeah, she should be in Mechanist after being fed all of the stat boosters. <laughs> You do get a lot of energy drops in Birth Ray, so... Yeah. So Hana gives her a very cool class in the Samurai, further boosting her dodge tanking capabilities um, if you want to. You can grab Duelist Blow, and especially if you want to go into Swordmaster, Satsuna is going to have a lot of avoid. <laughs> so... It becomes realistic suddenly that she can dodge tank, especially against things like the Chapter 24 Berserkers, who are at weapon triangle disadvantage against swords. However, what she's probably wanting to do in Swordmaster is grab the skills and then get out as fast as humanly possible. <laughs> yeah, looking at the strength base of Swordmaster, and looking at Setsuna's personal strength base, you will be very, very sad. <laughs> sure, she can avoid the Berserker's hits, but what is she going to be doing in return? You have to get her to, like, de-rank swords already, and make her use the Axe Splitter in order to make her do any real damage against those guys. I do think she benefits a lot from Vantage, because what you can do with Vantage with her is that obviously she can survive one hit, two if you're lucky, yeah. <laughs> in on enemy phase. If she hasn't dodged everything by this point, then she is going to be almost dead. So Vantage will be activated, and then, especially if she's going in Mechanist, she'll probably have like 1-2 range, she'll be able to counterattack before the enemy can land its final blow, that can save her life, which is very valuable, especially for a unit that is frail like her. But the issue with Setsuna having Vantage is getting to the point where that last hit from Setsuna will kill all the enemies, mm. because... Setting that up will usually require another unit that isn't Setsuna. Yeah, Vanta like she she can use it. Um, honestly, the most applicable use for Vantage on Setsuna is to save her life with the guard gauge and yeah. um, not really anything else. So even if you are relying on Vantage activating for Setsuna. What's more likely, rather than someone like Ryoma or like even Jacob, instead of just instantly killing the enemy back, she's just trying to live. Yeah, I guess technically 
Vantage Mechanist Setsuna will have a bit of an easier time getting experience because thanks to her low defense stats, enemies will prefer to target her above your actual bulky units that are making progress. So if your bulky units like Obero with shield defense have set her up for a kill, she can draw the aggro from the enemies and kill them with Vantage without dying. It's... If you want to use Setsuna, you kind of have to do that if you want to gain experience in any sort of reasonable speed. Yeah, um, one thing that I do think should not go unmentioned is how easy it is to get Rally Speed and Rally Luck as well. These two skills are probably the two easiest rallies to grab in Birthright, and they are rallies that increase a void. Um, Setsuna is a unit that already has a lot of avoid and she'll probably oftentimes be banking on dodging some units yeah. if you want to do some like big enemy phases with her. So using those with Setsuna is pretty valid and it can help a lot. The combination of Rally Speed and Luck gives her a plus 10 to her avoid which is very impactful, especially once you're getting closer to 0% hits. Another skill that lets Setsuna survive a bit more is Astra. Now, it's not a very good skill at doing that because its proc rate is skill percent over two. So at base, she has nine skill and cutting that in half, you have a 4% proc rate which probably isn't going to be very much better because her skill growth isn't the best. She does have a decent skill growth on paper thanks to the Archer class line, but once she's out of there, then her skill growth isn't going to be very good. Yeah. One nice thing is that she does start with skill plus two. Yeah. Um, so that will help out a little bit, but, you know, it's only two skill. It, it's... it's, yeah. it's um, it's not going to do much to be too impactful. Like, at base, that Astra proc chance is, is going up by 1%. Yeah. So, I mean, like, you know, that is better. Still not good. Yeah. Although, Setsuna is actually probably one of the better users of Astra as a defensive skill because when a lot of units that are using Astra use it, they are probably going to kill the opponents before all five hits connect, which means they don't get a full guard gauge out of it. But in Setsuna's case, uh, with her damage output, she is probably not going to be killing an enemy even after all five hits of Astra. So she will be getting the full benefit of a full guard gauge anytime it procs. Yeah, definitely. One nice skill also for Setsuna is seal strength yes so we've we've definitely talked about this before how seal strength when you enemy phase with this skill and fail to kill the enemies it's it's nice to have their their strength sealed because now they're doing a lot less damage to your like squishy unit and then that increases their survivability they can that this can allow setsuna to take like maybe like two to three more hits on enemy phase than she otherwise would be able to take, yeah. which is massive for her. Now, the the nice thing about Setsuna with this skill in particular is that her damage output is so low that sometimes she'll even be three rounding enemies. Yeah. Um, which is worst case scenario um for for any unit that is trying to enemy phase because that's just so many chances for the enemies to actually land an attack um and those chances add up even with Setsuna's high avoid she's probably still gonna get hit at least a few times there so using seal strength to increase her survivability with that is very very valuable also master of arms just the class in general is pretty nice for helping her defense and her strength though she still suffers the same problem as uh, the other classes where she's stuck in e-rank hell she at least gets to choose to be in weapon triangle advantage in master of arms and that definitely helps with her avoid rates even though mm. the amount of avoid you get from e-rank weapon triangle advantage is not very good 
Once you get to level 15 in Master of Arms, you can do the funny life and death Setsuna build. And, like, if there was any units that I would recommend life and death on in normal play, it would probably be Setsuna just because she's not going to have very much of an enemy phase to begin with. So, having 10 extra damage on a unit that will probably die if two enemies hit her to begin with is not the worst thing. It does help her out, because especially with uh, Setsuna, because, um, again, her speed is incredible. So, she will be able to use things like you know, steal Yumi plus one or something crazy with yeah. that and like double with life and death and the the damage output will actually be really good. Again, you know, another problem with this skill, level 15, Master of Arms, it's, it's going to be a hard time actually getting there. However, access to the full weapon triangle does make her time a lot easier in this class than others. Yeah, although her problem now is she'll still not be able to one-shot enemies that aren't like Wyvern Lords and Malignites. So her issue becomes making sure that she is able to avoid getting counterattacked. because if the enemies have like a Tome or a Javelin and they hit her, she might die. Yeah. She, with not life and death, and even in general, kind of without it, what you kind of have to do with her is not enemy phase um yeah. she's mainly just a strictly player phase unit so what you're probably going to end up doing with her is you'll have a bunch of your units like in a group and they'll be all fighting these enemies and then there's like one or two left over and then life and death setsuna can probably clean up the job before the enemy phase and then there will be no enemies left so like she she synergizes well with other units but by herself doesn't really work out too well <laughs> yeah so yeah samurai is probably going to be the one friendship class that she is going to consider i mean i guess if you really wanted an extra rally speed user setsuna is an option but if you're already deploying hinoka hinoka will probably be getting to rally speed eventually so yeah way sooner than setsuna too. yeah but yeah, I really the only the only nice thing here is that if she wants to go into Ninja, she doesn't need a heart seal from Kagero and Hinoka's friendships. However, I would still say the samurai option is still better. Now, she does have access to a bunch more class sets thanks to marriage. Does anything here stand out to you very much? Yeah, so a lot of these are terrible. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sky Knight, uh, again, Tsubaki sucks, no, for her. And then there's also Troubadour, which is just terrible for her. And then Samurai from Ryoma and Hinata is a little redundant. So that's honestly not amazing either. I actually wonder how low her defense is gonna be if she instantly reclasses it to Troubadour. Uh, I can check for a second real quick. Two defense, let's go. Oh, that's, that's beautiful. <laughs> Three strengths, three magic, two defense. Uh, that's that's amazing. <laughs> Setsuna just kind of like you you never want to instantly reclass her. Um, yeah. But yeah, the there's a few supports in particular that will stand out, and I believe the the funniest one is Azama's. Yes. Yeah. Um. So Azama gets her miracle. Which is good <laughs> for <Yeah. laughs> Which is a very, very rare thing to be saying about a unit in, in Fates. But in a game where she's mostly getting two or three shot by enemies, sometimes even one shot, she really likes this. It just helps her survivability like way more. It can save you out of situations where you accidentally overextend her or didn't fully check enemy ranges. And then, oops, she's in danger of dying now, but Miracle saves her. <laughs> yeah. Um, she does notably have a pretty bad luck stat, though. Her mm -hmm. base is 6 in Archer and her growth is 35%. So you're never going to... 
have a very high chance of frocking Miracle, but when it frocks, oh, you really feel it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, but before we get to the other skills, I do want to mention that if she marries Azama, she gets access to Priestess. Priestess gives you bows, which she already has bow rank 4, and she also gets staves, which, well, like, she's, she's a terrible healer, but it does get her experience yeah. <laughs> if you want to use it. But the main important thing about getting Priestess is not that she has bows and staves, it's that in Priestess, she has, she's in the class with the highest bases in the entire game, and she loves that. <laughs> if you want to use Bow Setsuna, I think Priestess is probably her best class to be in. <laughs> yeah. Priestess also gives her access to the Renewal skill, and Setsuna is probably the worst user of Renewal in the entire game, because she is probably going to get two shots by enemies, and Renewal only heals 30% of your health, which means it'll probably take two turns in order to heal off the amount of damage you take from a single enemy. It's very sad. Yeah, the best use case for Renewal is, funnily enough, allowing her to be able to proc Miracle again. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, it, I mean, it'll be nice if she's, like, alone and you only have, like, concoctions or vulneraries with her. And that can save you from either having to use them or it can help Setsuna just get back to full HP, which can be useful. But for the most part, yeah, it, it's it's more than likely that she's just not going to benefit too much from the skill. I should also note that Setsuna actually has a fast support with Izama, which means it'll only take six maps to get her to S support with him. Yeah, and they join on the same chapter. And notably, Azama is stuck in a healing class, and Setsuna does not die to any of the enemies in Chapter 8. So what Setsuna and Izama are able to do to build their support in that chapter and even in Chapter 9 is that Setsuna can enemy phase like one enemy, she will probably be fine, and then Azama can just heal her up. Back to full HP, she can do it again over and over again until they've both reached their S support, which is nice. Still, being a bow locked unit building supports with a staff locked unit is never going to be the most efficient thing you can be doing, but having one fewer map to have to deploy them both on is probably going to help you a lot in actually getting to S support with Setsuna. Mm. And if you want to go this route, this is going to be pretty difficult for her, but she can do it. She can get friendship with Hinoka, she can marry Izama, and then she'll have rally speed, rally luck, rally magic. Yeah. Three rallies, but her time in Falcon Knight and Omiyoji will be awful, Yeah. frankly. You could do this with Tatsuna, or you could just have Sakura in her base class set get all three of those skills. Yeah. She doesn't really benefit from the other skills. Tome Fair, she probably isn't going to be using tomes. And counter magic is like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she is going to be taking big damage from tomes, so she is going to be one of the better users of it. Yeah, she will take a lot of damage, so it's like, she'll, she'll probably be able to score a few kills with it. Yeah. But I feel like that may end up being more detrimental. Yeah. Another marriage option that she has that is, uh, I, I guess it's not the worst thing in the world. Um, she gets Spearfighter from Takami. Probably the unit that benefits the most from Seal Defense, which makes her deal a non-zero amount of damage. She is definitely a very good user of seal defense if she wants to use it selfishly. The other utility skills from this class being swap and seal speed, she- I mean swap is, is already a selfless skill, but seal speed, like, she's already doubling. There, there's there's no point to use this for, for the sake of her. The best thing that she's probably going to do with these seal skills is she can go into like mechanist or sniper or kenshi knight or something and then she can like go ahead and like 
we, like chip an enemy for not too much damage, but then seal them, and that'll allow other units to have an easier time killing them. And she's not the worst user of that if she wants to like feed kills, because if you do go back to Mechanist after grabbing Seal Defense and Seal Speed, she'll also get Poison Strike, and then she's suddenly kind of a god at <laughs> uh, setting up kills for other units. Yeah, though the issue is more surviving the counterattack from the enemies when she's setting up kills. But yeah. if you're willing to devote a healer to her, healing her at every single turn when she gets counterattacked, you could do worse. But also, Obero also exists. Mm -hmm. So you, you like Obero is just gonna have an easier time doing this. the The problem you may end up running into is that Obero might want to instead of like set up kills for other units, she might be wanted wanting to just kill the units outright. Yeah. And then another thing is in Spear Master, there's only one Javelin and there's only one free Bolt Naginata. Obero's probably going to be using at least one of those. Yeah. Uh, so Setsuna can get the other one. And she doesn't really care too much about using the Bolt Naginata. Like, her damage is already terrible. So yeah. it's, like, it's all right. I guess Rent Heaven isn't the worst skill. Anything to make her deal non-zero damage is going to help her yeah and it does it it's i believe tied with vengeance for best odds of actually proccing for a proc skill and if you stick around in Besara for long enough you will get that plus 15 percent chance to activate it which is nice um although for... quixotic comes with the side effect of reducing her avoid rates uh yeah that's uh, not very ideal for her. <laughs> yeah. It's probably generally not a good skill for her to grab. Yeah, if she's if she's getting Quixotic, then she's effectively committing herself to being a strictly player phase unit. Uh, and then I guess the other unique one is Silas. I, I wouldn't recommend it, but like, you know, Elbow Room's pretty good. <laughs> Um, and if you do end up deploying Setsuna after marrying Silas, having an extra shelter user probably is not the worst thing to do. Compared to what else Setsuna might be doing on player phase, being a shelter user is probably going to be better than her other contributions, to be honest. Yeah. And one, one nice thing is that she does give a lot of speed, and that's probably what Silas struggles with the most. So Silas does appreciate Setsuna. He probably doesn't really care about like the class it gives her or gets him rather, sorry. But you know, he, he, he really he really enjoys Setsuna para. I guess if you're willing to commit to Great Knight Setsuna, getting the capstone skill Armored Blow will make her a slightly better player phase unit. Minus 10 damage taken on player phase from physical attacks. Not the worst thing. Yeah, and Aegis has a similar story where it's like, it's not the worst thing. It, it actually will help her out quite a bit with survivability. Kind of problem with Aegis is that it is a proc skill, so you can't yeah. rely on it, but it is there and you can use it and she's not the worst user of it. <laughs> if you're willing to get her 15 levels in Paladin, sure, why not? You'll take what you can get at that point. And Defender is one of the few bulk boosting skills that you can get in Birthrights. It is plus one defense, plus one resistance, but when you're working with numbers as low as Setsuna's, that is a pretty significant bump. Yeah, I feel like she she does like the, the stat line of Cavalier. And she doesn't even really hate the weapons it gives her, especially Great Knight. Great Knight gives her access to the full weapon triangle. And that'll allow her to, you know, meaningfully contribute to things like killing armor knights with the hammer or killing cavaliers with the beast killer or using like any other effective weapon. She really wants the effective weapons, basically. <laughs> If you're using Setsuna in Great Knights, she probably just needs to get the arm scroll immediately so that she can contribute with effective weapons, because otherwise, uh, it's not great. Yeah. 
she is one of the few units that I would say doesn't hate the low speed of Great Knight because her speed is already monstrous enough. And I believe, uh, let me check her growth rate in Great Knight. She still has a 65% speed growth in Great Knight, wow. which is, okay. is insane. So like, she'll, she'll be fine in that front. She will never, like, it does not matter what class you put her in. She will probably never struggle to reach doubling thresholds. And she does benefit a lot from the extra damage stacking skills of Elbarum and Luna. I guess if you want to do enemy face at Suna, Cavalier or Great Knight is not the worst option. Having control over a weapon triangle to boost your avoid rates in the very controlled situations you will be letting Setsuna enemy phase in. Not the worst thing. So yeah, who do you think is the most practical option for Setsuna to marry? I usually pair her with Subaki or Kaze as the you're deploying Setsuna to get her married and then sending her off to the bench to never be deployed ever again is what I usually do. And Subaki and Kaze are two of the better early promotion candidates that do benefit a bit from the extra strength and speed from Setsuna's pair up. I do agree with Subaki. However, I think that Saizo is a better recipient of Setsuna than Kaze is because Saizo's problem is speed. So Setsuna giving Saizo speed is probably one of the best things she could be doing. And it doesn't even really hurt Asugi that much uh, having Setsuna growths. It's, it's still not ideal. Any child of Setsuna is not going to love their lives, yeah. but they, they will, like Asugi isn't, isn't like killed by it. Um, he yeah. can still function. Same with Saizo, even to a like further degree, because he isn't affected by Setsuna growths. And then, you know, he gets access to this super fast, if you're using her as a pair up bot, probably Kenshi Knight pair up, which is really good for him. I actually did the calcs, and after a rigged meal, and an Iron Shuriken Forge, and Setsuna pair up, and Inspiring Song, Saizo can one round all of the ninjas in the ninja chapter after the Steel Shuriken debuffs. Wow. So it is possible to make size of your best unit for that map. Yeah, that's that's pretty pretty cool. And Subaki actually does benefit quite a bit from Setsuna because Kyldori has access to Kinshi Knight from her base class set. So you're probably going to be sending Subaki down the Falcon Knight class line to pass down Rally Speed, while Kyldori will go into Kinshi Knight and in that class line, she will be getting the archer skills, most notably Quick Draw from Setsuna's class inheritance. Yeah, and that's that's gonna help out Kaldori a lot, especially with Setsuna growths, because yeah. they're not beautiful. Getting um, the plus eight damage stack from having her personal skill active at all times because her strength stat doesn't exist on top of Quick Draw on player phase is really nice in yeah, actually nice. allowing her to accomplish tasks. And the nice thing about this is that it doesn't even require Setsuna to level up to level 10 to get Quick Draw. Even if she does nothing but stay in Tsubaki's backpack, she will still be able to pass down the Archer class line, which allows Kyldori to learn the skills herself. Probably the final like great option for her marriage is Azama. It's just, it's a convenience option, mostly because yeah. it is a fast support and fast supports are always going to be nice to have and, and like good to pursue. If your goal is to bench Setsuna as soon as possible and like like she already joins with Azama so she can like get that done pretty quickly. And then on top of that, Azama's speed isn't too amazing, especially if you like reclass him into Apothecary because Apothecaries aren't too fast. So giving that speed pair up for Azama is really nice and that skill pair up because Azama's skill is not good. So that's that's definitely a really good option for her that I um, I think is, is good to always consider. If you're taking a turn count as your primary consideration, it's probably going to be either Subaki or Saizo. Well, if you just want the absolute minimum number of maps you can deploy Setsuna for, it will be Azama. 
I have done the Setsuna Takumi marriage option once. It was a miserable slog. I do not recommend it. So having two <laughs> bow locked units supporting each other will take a long time to get to S support. Yeah, especially since like Setsuna and Takumi, they kind of have opposite problems from each other. Like Setsuna wants damage and Takumi wants speed. And like in theory, that does mean they could work well with each other, but uh, frankly, if Setsuna isn't being a pair of bot for Takumi, that's not really how it works. <laughs> it is Takumi's best path towards the Mechanist class line, because Kagro marriage is probably going to be more contested, but Mechanist Takumi, as we've mentioned before, is still not great, <laughs> so probably not worth it in the end. But. If, for some reason, you do want to use Setsuna as one of your primary carries, like with most units, you probably want to put her into Mechanist so that she can counter at 1-2 range, and she will have stats that exist. I mean, she does have the niche of having Ninja in her base class set and having Samurai as a friendship option, so she can get into Vantage Mechanist easier than many other units in the game, but if you look at her stats and how they compare to an actual good Vantage Ninja, things do not look very good for her. <laughs> Comparing promoted at 20 level 5 Mechanist Setsuna to a level 5 Master Ninja Saizo after promoting at level 20, Setsuna is down by 7 attack. She has 5 higher speed, which is often just going to be overkill. She has 20 less hit. She has less avoid than Saizo, thanks to the extra avoid bonus given by the Master Ninja class. She has 9 less crits, 8 less dodge, 7 less defense, and 1 more resistance alongside 4 less HP. It's not good. Yeah, like, this is, this is like the prime example of like... The, this this unit uh, she'll exist um, on player phase. She'll exist, but then there's all these other units that are doing the exact same thing, but better on both phases. And that's that's just like she she struggles so hard against this because like e even especially against Saizo, um, because Saizo needs. Um, he needs to go into Vantage with this build, or he needs to go into Samurai with this build, and then immediately go back into Master Ninja. He can do that with no supports. He doesn't need help with it, though he probably does want to get a plus with Kaze to not use a heart seal, or not use two heart seals rather. Meanwhile, Setsuna does have to work way harder to get to where she is here. Not only do you have to train her to level 10 in Archer with her terrible stat lines, but then you have to get a support with Hana, who also doesn't really love her stat line, like when, when paired with Setsuna, because they then you just have two units that die in one hit. And then, you know, two levels in Samurai is just way harder for Setsuna than it is for almost any other unit in the game. She still has better performance in Samurai than Orochi, give her that credit. Okay, yeah, she's better than Orochi. Uh, <laughs> you know, like, it's, like, she, it's, it, she doesn't pass a lot of units with this build. Which is just her main downfall. She has a harder time even getting to this, and then other units, even when she is there, just outshine her anyways. The 7 defense deficit, while also not even being the better dodge tank than Saizo, is just so sad. <laughs> you put in all this work, and what do you get? The worst possible juggernaut in Birthright. Not to mention, uh, you rank hell. Yeah. But... <laughs> 
Raising Setsuna in this way might not seem like the most appealing thing to you because all this time we've been talking about how, oh, Setsuna can be one of the best dodge tanks in the game, which is true by technicality, I guess but Birthright isn't a game that's super friendly for dodge tanking outside of like Ryoma and Master Ninjas. And if you want to make Setsuna your best dodge tank, uh, if you want to maximize her survivability on enemy phase and make her a true enemy phase tank thanks to her avoid, she's still going to be struggling a lot with that. Now, there are weapons in Birthright that can boost your avoid. These are generally going to be my castle drops, though. But if you do manage to get the Bird Spirit, which grants an extra plus 15 avoid, and puts Atsuna into a class that can benefit from it, she will only have 62 avoid at an equivalent internal level as the comparison that we made before. Yeah, and the notable downside to the bird spirit is that its hit is not good, and it gives her minus four defense, yeah. which is not something she loves, uh, to, be, to be honest. She does technically have access to skills that can boost her potential survivability, of course, Miracle, which she will kind of need because her avoid rates are never going to be perfect. So if she does get hit on her 4 fence and 26 HP, she has a very high chance that she's just going to die if she's hit by more than one enemy. She does have access to Vantage Astra to cheat death by hitting an opponent first and procking the 8% chance to get a full guard gauge from Astra, which better than nothing I guess. And she can seal strength to slightly decrease the amount of damage they'll be doing, although enemy attack is probably going to be a whole lot higher than 4, so the amount that's going to be doing is not very much. And from Priestess, yeah. she does get Renewal, which allows her to get one more proc of Miracle every turn. Yeah, this uh, does work, um, given the right RNG. Yeah. Um, in fact, I even recorded a demo of this build working in Chapter 22, uh, which will probably be in the description. Um, there, like... <laughs> She'll still struggle, to be honest. She will still have hit problems in this class with the Bird Spirit. She'll have attack problems. She will still like fail to one round any enemy without Astra or critting. Even with Astra, she can sometimes still struggle a bit. And notably, in Birthright, there's a lot of enemies that have very high resistance. Yeah. And with 14 magic attack, that does zero to almost every magical-based enemy in the game. Congratulations, all of this for 10 more avoids than Saizo. Woohoo! And <laughs> to add insult to injury, if you just made the previous Atsuna, the physical mechanist Atsuna, into a Master Ninja, she would have the same avoid as this Bird Spirit Setsuna, thanks mm. to Master Ninja class bonuses and the extra speed she gets. Also notably, in Master Ninja, she gets swords, and at D rank in swords, there's another My Castle weapon that boosts a void, even more so than the Bird Spirit, in the Sunrise Katana, which yeah. gives 20 a void. However, the downside to this weapon is that unlike the Bird Spirit, it is not 1-2 range, so Setsuna won't be able to counter every single enemy, which means she'll probably have a quicker time dying if she gets unlucky enough and doesn't get hit or yeah. continues to get hit. She will not be able to counter at 2 range, meaning that she cannot build guard gauge by doubling from there, and she will have even fewer opportunities to proc Vantage Astra, which really is not ideal. This build can kind of be appealing because, hey, I have a mage that can take zero damage a lot of the time, but you know what other mage can take zero damage from a lot of enemies? Rinka. The other way to take zero damage is just by stacking defense, and low effort horse spirit Rinka at level 5 promoted, which is the same internal level as Setsuna in this build, will have 29 defense. <laughs> 
The defense difference is almost as much as Setsuna has HP, which means for certain attacks, Rinka will be taking zero damage while Setsuna will be dying. <laughs> it's so sad. Yeah, and the nice part with Rinka is that she doesn't ever have to worry about getting unlucky and accident. Oops, I got hit. Now I'm dead. <laughs> like that that's that's a problem that Setsuna will have a lot because even if she's facing very very high avoid rates they're probably going to be non-zero and even with the bird spirit even with the spirit katana she will face weapon triangle disadvantage at some point and that will get enemy hit rates probably up into the 60s or like high 50s at least and that is Honestly, not gonna cut it if you're gonna try and dodge tank. And if you look at the stats here, Setsuda's avoid lead over Rinka is only 20 points. It's not even that good. Yeah, like, Setsuna is... In, in order to do anything, Setsuna needs stat boosters. Yeah. Um, she needs tonics, she really needs meals, and she... Even here... With this, like, super avoid stack, she will want the spirit dust really bad. Yeah. Um, and then she'll probably want the Draco shields. She'll probably want Seraph robes. And at that point, it's just so many resources into this one unit to just be okay at something. And it's like, is it worth it? But no matter how bad we've made Setsuna luck today... You should still know that Setsuna can still be the best unit in the game, because just recently, well, maybe not recently by the time that this video comes out, but Blug has done a Setsuna solo run of Birthright where Setsuna gets every single kill in the game. Yes, uh, from her join time in Chapter 8, she achieved uh, every kill. She got not not a single other unit was allowed to do meaningful combat that killed an enemy, which means she got everything in chapter eight. She got everything in chapter 12, everything in chapter 25, Camilla's map, Hans's map, even end game. She was able to do it all. And that's because in fates, no matter how bad a unit is, there is still a way to make them good. Sometimes, for some units, it may require more effort than others to make them good, but at the end of the day, you're still going to be able to solo the game with her, and that's all that matters. Yeah. You will have to give her all the stat boosters and maybe like the Dread Scroll and Core in Marriage to get the talent of her choice. Uh, yes. But if you do that, she will be just good enough to do what she needs to do. Um, and as a one, I guess, last note for that, uh, speaking of Corrin talent, I think one of her better classes is Merchant from Apothecary. She can't get that without Corrin, though, yeah. uh, is the main problem. Uh, most units actually can't, because Apothecary is just a super rare class. But it, it gives her really, really, really good options. It gives her Mechanist and Merchant, and those classes, obviously we've already talked about Mechanist, but Merchant has high bulk, high strength, gets her a damage reduction skill on player phase at level 15. It allows her to use lances along with bows, and unlike Kenshi Knight, doesn't have terrible defense, so she can like realistically use like Guard Naginata, for something and um, she'll also get quick self so she'll be able to heal and attack on uh, the same turn which is nice yeah we've been talking about Tatsuna for her use in gameplay but really the big appeal of using Tatsuna is in reading her supports you really want to have Tatsuna marry every single man in the game because her supports in this game are excellent I highly recommend reading them Yes, I, I love her supports. Um, if you want a really, really endearing one, um, read her support with Selena. It's, yes. it's so amazing. And um, if you want a funny one, uh, her support with Jacob is good. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, ma many, many others. I don't 
I can't even think of a bad support at the top of my head. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm a fan of the Arthur supports where they encounter a pitfall. <laughs> Anything else you have to say? Anything you want to plug at the end of the video? Um, yeah, so, uh, I guess, um, first of all, thanks for having me on here. Satsuna is one of my <laughs> favorite units in this game, despite being so terrible. Um, and uh, I actually uh, do a lot of uh, birthright stuff myself on my own YouTube channel. I do a lot of um, content on all three routes of the game, though currently my main focus, as of recording this at least, is uh, birthright. Um, I have been working on this playthrough of birthright where I'm not allowed to use the uh, guard stance mechanic. Um, in combat, and uh, that's uh, just recently uh, reached its one-year anniversary, which has been <laughs> uh, a little, a little sad. But you know, we we move. Um, as as part of my challenge, I have uh, taken upon myself to get every single unit in the game married, um, except for Corin Sexuals, which does include Setsuna, and. Um, <laughs> I also decided that I wanted to give her friendship with Hinoka, so uh, she got a lot of use in yeah. this playthrough. Um, but yeah, um, that's been that's been pretty fun. So if you want to see how I've been handling that, definitely go check that out. All right, thanks for being on, and I will see you next time.